first graders, Miss Adams back. Today we are gonna switch gears a little bit and over the next few weeks, we are gonna visit the farm. We are gonna draw some fun farm animals. And today we are gonna start with one of my favorite little sheep. So go ahead and get your art paper, get something to draw with and let's begin. I suggest you have your paper sideways today, not up and down tall, but sideways. It's a little bit easier to fit your sheep on the page that way. We are gonna go ahead and start with our sheep's eyeball. So wherever you want your sheep's eye, I want you to just point with your finger, okay? Point with your finger where you want your sheep's eye and look at where it is. If your finger's way down at the, at the bottom of your paper, sheep's not gonna fit. If your finger's way over here to the side, sheep's not gonna fit, okay? So kind of maybe kind of in the middle or over just a little bit. We're gonna start with a curve line for the top of your sheep's eye, and I wouldn't make it super big. Don't make a curve line this big. We're gonna keep it pretty small. Make a curve line for the top of his eye. Then we're gonna make a curve line for the bottom of his eye to finish it out. And on the inside, we're gonna draw that black part, the pupil, but remember, we're gonna leave a little space of light showing to show the reflection, make them look realistic, okay? So we've got the eye. Now, this is gonna be kind of funny, but we are gonna make his nostril, we're gonna make a curve line for his nose, and then we're gonna connect it. So I want you to watch before you make this. Don't make anything yet, watch what I do. I'm gonna take my finger, and I'm gonna go down just a little ways and over, and I'm gonna put a tiny dot. Watch, take my finger down just a little ways and over just a little ways, just make a tiny dot. That's all you have to do. So that from that tiny dot, I know there's gonna be a curve line for the top part of his nostril. And I'm gonna make it a little thicker. So take whatever you're drawing with, just make it a little thicker, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and start the top part of his head right here. From his nostril, I'm gonna make this slanted line and it's gonna stop mm, about where the eye is, maybe a little bit over the eye, maybe a little bit before you get to the eye. Make it slanted back. And then from that same nostril, I'm gonna make a slanted line that comes down just a little ways, down just a little ways, and if you'll notice on the very edge, it's even a little thicker on the very edge. So just a little, make that just a little thicker, just like that. So we've made it down and then we're gonna make it curve back. Now look, he's got very big jaws. And so there's this curve line for his jaw. The reason is, what are they eating? They're not eating ice cream and frozen yogurt. They're eating like grass and hay and oats, things that you have to chew and chew and chew and chew. Animals that eat those things like horses or sheep, they have very strong jaws. Who, no, 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 they just chew all day. So we are gonna make this curve line that slants and then we're gonna stop. It's not gonna be as long as this top line that we made. We're gonna make it slant back and it's gonna stop. So watch, I'm gonna make it slant back and stop because then we need to add this curve line to show that jaw muscle right here that's so important so that they can not, not, not eat all the time. So we're gonna make this curve that comes up and look, it stops about even with the eye. Doesn't have to be perfect. Right here, wherever we stopped, that's where his little ear is sticking out. So I'm gonna make for the bottom part of his ear, I'm gonna make a little curve line. And then I'm gonna make a curve line that comes back in. And you can see the inside of his ear, so I'm just gonna double it. Okay, now sheep, of course, are known for their wool, for the fur that grows on them, and it grows and it grows and it grows. If they are not shaved, they can get huge, like to where they can't even hardly walk. So you have to take care of sheep and make sure that you shave them all the time. And then, of course, that's what we make um, fabrics out of. So we are gonna go ahead and make his fluffy wool. So over his ear till this line, I'm gonna go ahead and make little fluffy curve lines and then I'm gonna stop. Then I'm gonna make it curve over the other side of the ear. So I'm gonna swing it around 
Make those curvy, fluffy lines over that ear and stop. Now, we can barely see his other ear sticking out on the other side of his head. Barely, barely. So I'm going to kind of look wherever I started this fluffy line. I'm going to go ahead and show just, oh, another dried out marker. I'm going to go ahead and show another curved line that you can just barely see. And then it's going to curve in and touch. That's the other ear. Now, we are going to go ahead and make, oh, before I forget, if you want to make a little tiny mouth line, you don't see too much of the mouth, but you can make that little tiny mouth line on the end. Now, we are going to continue with his fluffy, fluffy body. So I'm going to start where that nice big jawline is, this curved line, and I'm going to make those fluffy lines down for however tall you want his body to be. Notice how his body's real fluffy, but they still have kind of skinnier legs that are a little smoother. So we're going to show the fluffy, fluffy body with fluffy lines, and then we'll make smoother lines for the legs. So we're going to start from this jawline. I'm going to make fluffy lines that come down however long, however tall you want the body. Then I'm going to go ahead for his belly and make fluffy lines that come back. Now, he's not a super long animal. He's not a snake or a crocodile. He's got, you know, kind of a shorter body. So you don't want to make these fluffy lines all the way back. Okay, I'm just going to bring him back. Fluffy lines, curved lines for however long you want the body to be. And then look, it kind of starts to curve up for his belly. You can see how his belly sort of curves up just a little bit, just a little ways. Then we're going to go ahead and show his back. So coming up, not at the bottom of this line, but up just a little bit. I'm going to show another row of fluffy curve lines about the same length. Now there's kind of an extra little fluffy line that comes down for where his leg starts. So not at the end of this line, but down just a little bit. I'm going to show another slanted fluffy line that comes down. Then this is all going to connect. So I'm going to start here, connect it down with some fluffy lines. And oh, you can see just a little bit of a tail sticking out. Little fluffy tail. Not too long. It's not a long tail. It's not you know, a really long tail. It's kind of short and, short and fluffy. Now for the legs, we're going to go ahead and come to the front part of his body. And I'm going to show this leg right here. How many legs do they have? They've got four. So we're going to start with the first one towards the front. I'm going to go ahead and make a smooth line this time that comes down for however long you want his leg to be. And look guys, even though they're fluffy, fluffy bodies and they look kind of big, the legs are pretty skinny. So you're not going to want to make a big fat elephant leg, right? You're going to keep it pretty skinny. So skinny next to it. I'm going to go ahead and make another leg, or excuse me, another line for the other side of the leg. And then they have hooves. They don't have feet with toes sticking out like we do. They have hooves. So we're just going to connect it for his hook. We're just going to make it touch. Very skinny next to this. You barely see the second leg. You barely see it. So very skinny next to it. Watch, I'm going to make another line. And look, first grade, this is going to make it very realistic. I'm going to make it shorter. It's going to be a little bit shorter. It's not going to be as long because it's a little further away. It looks smaller. We've kind of started to talk about that more. We're going to make it shorter to make it look like it's just a little further away. And then this time I'm going to make that hoof and it's just going to come back and disappear. That's all you need to do. You can also double those bottom lines by just making little curve lines across to show that they're the hooves. On the back leg, I want you to watch. It's shaped a little bit different. It has this bend to it. So remember where we had this fluffy line right here? I'm going to go ahead and make a slanted line. This time it's going to slant back and forward just a little bit. And it's going to be about even. This is the one closer to us, so it's about even. And then keeping it skinny still, I'm going to double it, following what I already have, and make it touch. Up, oh, add my hoof. Then again, friends, we're going to just double it right behind. Skinny, skinny. I'm going to double it, but keep it shorter because it's further away. And we're going to make it touch with the hoof. Now, these sheep have lots 
and lots of texture. They're wool, they're all sorts of crinkly, curly wool. So you don't wanna leave your sheep smooth like this. We're gonna add some texture lines. We're gonna add some little curve lines to show the texture. Now, does this look like nice soft sheep wool? Is that the kind of line that you think you should use? Ouch, that looks spiky. I wouldn't wanna wear a shirt made out of that, right? You wanna make it nice, soft, and fluffy to show that they're soft and fluffy, okay? Don't make it sharp and jagged. That's no sheep no, it, that I would wanna wear from. So you just wanna make some nice, soft, fluffy, sort of almost cloud lines here and there. And add as many soft, fluffy lines as you want to. And like I said, the legs look a little smoother, so you don't even have to do much texture for the legs. Now, for the background, you know what I have loved? I have loved seeing your background ideas. First graders, some of you have come up with backgrounds that I haven't even talked about. It has been so cool to see. So I wanna see what you come up with for this farm background. Um, let's practice, first of all, we don't have floating sheep, so we're gonna make the ground. So not at the very bottom of his hoofs, but up a little ways. We're gonna make our horizon line, we're gonna stop jump over all the way off. Look guys how I went all the way off my page. I don't have it just somewhat. I have it all the way across. And then I wanted to do a fence. You know, I don't want my sheep wandering off getting lost. So I could just do a little fence on my horizon line to show a fence in the background by just making little short straight lines up all the way across. And then I can just make straight lines over a couple straight lines going the opposite way. And this is a farm, it's not gonna be perfect. You don't need a ruler or anything. Okay, so that way I know my sheep is safe. You don't have to add that, of course. You can add any details that you want. If you wanna add some tall grasses for your sheep to eat for lunch, you sure could. You could draw a sun in the sky, you could draw clouds, you could draw a barn in the background. You think about what you want to add for your background. And then for the coloring in, a lot of times sheep will be all white or they'll have like black legs and black faces with a white body. Those are two really common types. What I don't want you to do though, friends, my challenge to you is not to just leave an all white sheep and say, oh, it's a white sheep. I'm not gonna color it at all. You need to add a little bit of coloring because as you can see, look at this. I'm gonna bring it really close so you can see. Even though we know this is a white sheep, friends, you can still see some gray in it. You could even see like just a little hint of yellowish or um, you know just light colors. So I want you to think about adding. I could take just a gray and just go over some of my lines that I added. I'm not gonna color the whole thing in gray, but if I add just a little bit of a color on top of the lines that I drew, even if I want his body to be white, that's gonna look a lot more realistic than leaving it just white paper. Because white paper, looks like white paper. It's our job to make it look different, look more like real life. So as you can see in this picture, in real life, we know it's a white sheep, but it's definitely not pure solid white like your paper. So I want you to color in with whatever you have at home and take a picture. If you need your adult at home's help, great. Take a picture and add it so I can see. I gotta see what you're working on, okay, first graders? So can't wait to see your sheep. I loved looking at your tree frogs. You did amazing. So I'm really excited to see your sheep and I can't wait to see what you've done. Miss you guys. Love you all. Have a good day.